Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, dear sister. You've written to us regarding your marriage and how you are experiencing domestic abuse at the hands of your husband. Subhanallah. Let me just let you know, first of all, that this kind of abuse is not okay in Islam. And it's not okay at all, even. So may Allah give you the patience and the strength to enjoy what you're going through and to work your way through it successfully, inshallah. Obviously, certainly from an Islamic perspective, we're always advised to do all that we can to hang on to a marriage, but sometimes it just doesn't work. And in your case, you've been the victim of domestic abuse, and this is not okay from an Islamic perspective. But I can't tell you whether you should leave or whether you should stay. That is ultimately going to be your choice, and only you can make that choice. But there are some really important things that you should consider when making your decision. So we know that marriage is supposed to be a source of happiness. As it says in the Quran in Surah 30, Ayat 21, And among his signs is this, He created for you mates among yourselves, that you may dwell in tranquility with them. And he has put love and mercy between your hearts. Verily in that are signs for those who reflect. So we see the words tranquility used here. And in the case of domestic abuse, there is going to be no tranquility. You've said yourself that you're not happy in the marriage right now and therefore you are not getting from marriage what you're supposed to get from it from an Islamic perspective. We know that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam treated women very kindly and we're supposed to follow in the example of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. so you should be treated kindly by your husband. And it even says in the Quran in Surah 4, Ayat 19, O oh believers, treat women with kindness even if you dislike them. It is quite possible that you dislike something which Allah might yet make a source of abundant good. So we know that women are supposed to be treated with kindness. The Prophet Muhammad treated women with kindness and the Quran itself. Allah tells us or tells men to treat their women with kindness, even if they don't like them. And also forbidding bad behavior towards women as well. As it says in the Quran in Surah 19, Ayat 90, Indeed, Allah orders justice and good conduct and giving to relatives and forbids immoral, immorality and bad conduct and oppression. He admonishes you that perhaps he will be or you will be reminded. So here we see the example of how Allah forbids being immoral and having bad conduct towards people and oppressing them, which in the case of domestic abuse, this is what's happening. So not only does Allah say that we should be, that men should be kind to their women, but the Quran also says, Allah tells us that we should be good to people, that we should not be immoral and that we should not oppress. And in the case of domestic abuse, none of this is happening. There's no kindness and there is no holding back from oppression. And it's not even just this kind of behavior that's expected towards women, towards spouses. It's that we should behave this way towards everyone. We should be kind towards everyone, not just spouses even. In fact, it even says in um, Iman Nawawi's 40 hadith, um, in hadith 32, that there should be no harming or reciprocating harm. So that's very clear. There's no, the, the, it's very clear that there should be no harm done to other people. So there are many scholars that would say, in this case, based on just these few ayats and hadith that we've referred to, that domestic abuse is not okay. Any, any suffering that's done to somebody else is not okay. And therefore, it's said by the scholars that a woman who's suffering from domestic abuse should go to the proper authorities and report her husband because he's committing a sin. So that might be the first step that you might take in this case is to go and report the behavior because it's not okay, especially because your children are also suffering as well because they are witnessing what's happening. And this is something that you need to take into account as well, not just what's happening to you, but also what the children are seeing as well. Understand that when they're seeing you being abused by your husband, that they're going to be thinking that this is normal behavior and they risk then ending up in, abu and in an abusive relationship themselves when they grow up because they see this to be normal behavior. This is the way mommy and daddy used to behave, that it's okay for a man to treat a woman like this. If you have a daughter, then she's going to think it's okay to be treated like that. And if you have a son, maybe he thinks it's going to be okay to treat a woman like that. And I'm sure as a parent, you don't want to see your children grow up to be like that. So in considering what you would do from now, do as well take into account this as well and the impact that it's going to have on your children in the future, but also the impact that it's going to be having on them now as well, seeing the two people that they love engaging in this difficult situation where 
They're seeing what's happening to you at the hands of your husband. If you choose, therefore, based on thinking about these different things to leave this relationship, then it's important that you get the support of others. So like I said, if you're going to go to um, the local authorities, go to your local imam and report your husband for the sin that he's committing towards you and towards your children, even if he's not touching them himself, the, it's, it's almost emotional abuse that he, and psychological abuse that he's submitting them to as well. So you might go to your local imam or even your family and just get the support from other people, even if it's just to have moral support in going through what you're going through or to find the support in, be, in being able to confront him about his behavior. That depends on how you know, you know him well. You said you've spoken to his family about it, um, so at least it's kind of is open. So to get the support of other people will help to support you, but also if you choose to go forward and to discuss things with him further, you will have the support from other people in doing this as well. And also if you go to talk with him about the situation with other people present, then it won't be that he's going to be physically abusing you because there are other people present. There's less chance of it happening. It might be that you, if you're able to approach him calmly with somebody else to support you or maybe the imam or a counselor from the mosque who can serve as a as some uh, as a mutual person in the agreement you can talk amicably about moving forward either in the relationship if you choose to try and overcome the difficulties or if you choose to make your separate ways then you might discuss things like um, how you share custody of the children for example just bear in mind that Ultimately, what you're going through is going to potentially have an impact on your self-esteem. It will have an impact on your self-worth because of what he's doing to you. So do make sure to make time as well to do things that make you happy as well so that you're not constantly subjected to the abuse and negative things in your life. Make sure that you have positive things in your life as well. Um, this might be if you choose to stay on with him, then ensure that you have this positivity in your life as well. So obviously, I can't tell you what the best thing for you to do is. That's something that you need to make a decision for yourself. You know your husband more um, than anyone else. Um, so you're the only one that can know how um, safe it is to move forward with any of these options, whether it is that you choose to leave him, get the support of someone to help you to leave the relationship, or whether you get somebody to go in and help you, help to support you and counsel your relationship to maybe inshallah, let the domestic abuse stop. Um, ultimately, that's going to be your decision to make, whether you stay or whether you try and make it work for you. But I think the best thing to do really is to make sure that you um, have somebody who can be present with you um, when you discuss things with your husband. Let it be a safe space where you can talk about things without fear. But ultimately, it is a really tough decision to make. Obviously, you want what's best for, for your children, especially maybe that they're raised in an environment where both mother and father are present, but at the same time, you don't want them to be raised in an environment where mother and father are present, but at the same time, they're witnessing abuse, and this could have potentially devastating effects both in the present time and in the future as well. So this is something that's really important to think about with regards to which step you take next. And the best possible thing that you could do at this point regarding making a decision about where to go from here is to pray istikhara. Ask Allah to guide you in making the best decision, the decision that will be best for you, best for your children and best for your future. And that will be most pleasing to him, whether that be that you stay or whether it be that you go. But either way, domestic abuse is not OK and you should not think that it's ever okay to stay in a relationship with somebody when they're treating you like that. If you choose to stay, then it's important that he overcomes this and you are able to move forward in an, a relationship where domestic abuse is not present. But pray istikhara and ask Allah to guide you to make the best choice that will be best for you, that will keep you and your children safe, inshallah. May Allah guide you to make the best decision and may he make things easier for you. May he grant you and your children and your family the best in this life and the next, inshallah.